Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Pop in the Bubbly and I'm sipping on my vanilla chai tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, phthalo green, Mars black, burnt sienna, which I will call rust, and deep yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And I have three brushes here. I have, get them in order here, I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 12 round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and even the piece of chalk is in there for you. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background with our large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using black and I'm not gonna be using any special technique. All I'm gonna be doing is painting in the entire canvas with black paint. You can really go in any kind of direction that you want. I like to try and give myself a nice even coat so you'll see me kind of um, working the paint on top of each other or kind of going back over a previous area just to make sure that I have it all of kind of the same thickness throughout. You can use I'm using my large bristle brush because I know that black covers really well so I'll have a nice good coverage regardless of the style of brush that I use but you could certainly use a different kind of brush to get yours on here. I am choosing to paint my canvas black as opposed to using a canvas that is already pre-primed with a black color. There are, you can purchase canvases that are pre-primed either white or black and I think they even have some other cool colors that you can have them pre-primed these days, but white and black are the most common. And the reason why I just choose to paint my white canvas black instead of using the original or using it pre-primed is the primer that the, that the manufacturers put on the canvas is not designed to be the final layer of your painting. If the primer is designed to allow the paint to adhere to the canvas cloth that the, um, that the canvas is made of. So if you are using a black canvas as like a shortcut to, to getting this dark color on, what I do recommend is you just make sure that you clear coat with uh, varnish or um, some kind of liquid medium to make sure that, that, that it's fully covered with a uh, some sort of acrylic medium that will allow it to age properly. And then if you want, you can also paint the edges or the sides of your canvas to give that nice full on look. But we are going to be using this same brush for, this, for the next step. So once you've got your canvas all nice and painted, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna be doing the glow behind the champagne explosion. <laughs> I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are yellow and burnt sienna. 
The um, I do want to recommend though that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start the step. It'll be much easier. So this is the time where you get to take the extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So really what I'm going to be doing is just kind of rubbing on these two colors in a chaotic type of way. I want to have a very large area that's going to be behind my explosion, but I want it to kind of uh, kind of dissipate out along the edges so I keep my edges kind of on the darker side. The paint that I'm using is a thin bodied student grade paint that has a lot of translucency to it. So if you're working with a heavy body paint, you may want to either thin it out a little bit with liquid, liquid medium or perhaps a touch of water. Um, that way you'll have the translucency and you'll be able to see the black behind it. So I'm going to take some of my yellow and I'm just going to start rubbing this in here. It will end up a lot darker when it dries because of the black that is behind it. Now I'm just gonna pick up some of my burnt sienna and I'm gonna do the same. I'm just gonna kind of start rubbing it in here. I may end up doing a couple of layers to this after I see how it dries, but you'll, you'll notice as I go out towards these edges, I'm gonna just kind of scrub my brush, which is a called a scumbling type of technique, which will allow it to almost get thinned out along those edges and have it look like it's kind of disappearing into that blackness. So I'm going to have it thicker or heavier in the center, and then I'm just going to kind of rub it out towards the edges. And of course, your area might end up a lot larger or smaller than mine. It's going to be totally up to you visually how much of this kind of glow that you want. I'm going to pick up a little bit more yellow, and then I'm just going to kind of keep playing with the two of these colors, letting it dry. Maybe I will let it dry and see all the way and see if I want to come back and do another layer to it. But you'll notice on yours as well, as it dries, it will get a lot darker. You can see along these edges here how they are really, at times, almost disappearing. So you'll want yours to see how it looks when it's dry. And then once you've got it as vibrant as you want, remember we're going to have a big explosion on top of it, so you don't have to go for it to be as bright as you're going to want your end result to be at this time. You just want to give it that, that glow that's going to be behind the explosion. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be utilizing our chalk for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, fiddle with this as much as you want, and then you can take out your, um, your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for the bottle and the cork. I'm gonna use my piece of chalk, and again, I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start the step. It's easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is on a wet canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a couple of markers. We'll connect those markers. We're just going for a real nice basic shape of these two elements that we can um, paint in in a little bit. So I'm gonna start with my bottle first. I'm gonna have my bottle coming out from the bottom left-hand corner of my canvas, and then my my cork is going to be up on the top right. And of course you can modify yours and put them wherever you'd like to. But I'm going to start with the, the top of my bottle. So I'm going to have the top of my bottle somewhere in this vicinity. So I'm going to give myself a couple of dots. So you're going to want to find about the halfway point left to right and make yourself a dot about, I would say maybe about an inch and a half to two inches below if you were to go halfway up and down and a little bit, you know, maybe about two inches below there, I might be a little bit to the left of the center, but somewhere in that vicinity. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel up about, I would say an inch, inch and a half, and then over to the left about an inch, inch and a half, give myself another bit of a marker and I'm going to connect those two. You can connect these with a really straight line or you can give it a little bit of an arc. It doesn't have to be totally perfect. I know a lot of champagne bottles have a little bit of a curve and depending on the angle that you're looking at them, that can give them a little bit of a curve. And then what you're gonna do is you'll come back towards the, the corner from the bottom left-hand corner from these two corners, I would say about two, two and a half inches and give yourself another couple of markers, something like that. Now we'll connect these two. 
I'm going to connect with a little kind of scalloped edge. So I'll go in a little bit and then come back out like this and then like that. And then I'll do something similar on the other side. And if you don't get them perfectly symmetrical, that's okay. We can always kind of disguise things with, with paint later. <laughs> and then once I've got that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the edges to the bottle as well. So I'm gonna have the um, corners of the, where the paper kind of is unraveled at the top of the bottle, I'm gonna have that kind of rippled. So I'm gonna go, um, to the right of this mark, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch, and then I'm going to go up from this one, maybe about a half of an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a, a, another little marker, I would say somewhere in like this vicinity, and then I'm going to connect here to here with a ripply line like that, and then I'll do the same thing from here to here with a little bit of a rippled type of line. That's going to make the the paper look rippled along the edges. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers down at the bottom of my canvas. So I'm gonna come up from this left-hand side about three inches. So I have this, if I was to travel over to my um, where my bottle is, I'm about halfway between that and the bottom of my canvas. That's about the height I have this one in through here. And then my bottom marker, let me just move this a little bit so we can see it as my chalk is like coming off. <laughs> so I'm gonna have this one right about here. So this is, if I come straight down from here, I'm a little bit to the left of that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my rippled edges to the sides of the bottle. So what I'm gonna do, you gotta imagine this is like the neck of the bottle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and kind of give it a little bit of a rippled edge in through there. And then right about here, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of start to bring it a level a little bit and then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bump, something like that. And I'll do something similar on this side. This top edge is intended to be kind of the rippled part of the paper, so it doesn't have to be super perfect, but if you can get it something, you know, that will resemble the rippled edge, that's awesome. And then I'm just gonna kind of do this and give it this little bump out. And again, one side doesn't have to be exactly the same as the other, and you can always modify it when we go to paint it. And then where the um, bottle kind of bumps out in through here, I'm gonna give myself a big curved line. This is gonna separate the paper from the actual bottle itself. That's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline on my bottle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do my cork. So my cork is gonna shoot straight from the bottle. So I suppose it could arc a little bit, but it's not very far away. So I'm thinking that it's it's going straight out. <laughs> so I'm going from here and I'm going straight towards like that, the corner of my canvas in through there. So I'm gonna have my, the, the um, bottom part of my cork shouldn't be really much wider than the bottom or the top of my bottle. So when I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a couple of little markers in through here. You can take your brush or any kind of measuring utensil and just kind of make sure that you've got it at least that it would fit inside the bottle. You don't want it too much wider or too much thinner, otherwise it won't fit in the neck of your bottle. So I've given myself a couple of little markers. I am to the right of the center of my canvas, maybe about three or four inches, and then I'm down about four. And then this is about two inches wide, similar to about what that is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give myself just these kind of arcing type of, well, first I can connect these two for the bottom of my cork. I'm gonna give myself a couple of, a little bit of an arcing kind of uh, mark where it's a little bit more narrow up at the top as opposed to the bottom of the um, cork. And then I'm just really gonna kind of round this out with like a, almost an oval type of shape on the top. And of course, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine if you need to adjust it, like I'm adjusting mine, go ahead and do so, that's the beauty of chalk. And then we're gonna be utilizing our medium brush for the next step, so you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our cork a bottle and the paper around the bottle. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are rust, yellow, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a 
tan type of color for the paper and the cork. So I've already magically pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. But how I got to there was I utilized some yellow, about equal parts of yellow and rust, a little bit of black, you don't need a lot, just a little bit of the black, and then a good amount of white. And then I just start spinning it together. I'm really just looking for a nice natural tan, creamy kind of color that I can utilize as a base coat for the cork. I think I need a little bit more white in there for the base coat for the cork and the paper on the um, bottle. So maybe a little bit. I brought it a little bit too light so we just kind of keep adjusting it. There we go. We're getting it now. And then once you've got the color that you're looking for, I am just going to paint in these two sections. So I've got my piece of paper in through here. I'm going to bring it all the way to my little chalk mark. You can even give some extra little ripples along the way. You don't need to do any fancy brush stroke. You just want to make sure that you've got a good kind of, a good coverage along the area and even if you don't have a perfect co coverage, that's okay because we've got another step where we're going to be adding all kinds of details to this so you don't have to worry about being too perfect on this step. I'm just going to kind of get it all the way to my um, chalk mark and if there's a you know extra chalk mark that hasn't been covered in this process, don't worry. Again, we've got all those other details that'll that'll happen in a future step. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my cork with this same color. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint this in all the way to my edges. And I know that I have that little bit of chalk that I'm going to want to erase with um, some water in a minute, but I haven't done that yet. <laughs> we can do that whenever you want to, if you have any remnants like I do. And then I'm just going to bring this along the side. I know that corks can some sometimes be a little kind of on, on the rounder side. So as I'm doing this, if I want to kind of round these, um, the uh, out, outside edges of it, I can certainly do that. And then once I've got this one colored in, I'm going to wash and dry my medium brush because I, I want to do a base coat for the, or I want to make sure the bottle is black for my base coat. So I know that I had that glowy part around it. Um, in certain areas, so I just washed and dried my brush, and I'm just going to color in any areas that need to be um, colored in for the bottle. So the bottom half might not need much, depends on how um, how far out you put your your background glow. So I'm just going to kind of go right up to my edges with my black, and if I again still have a little bit of chalk remnants left over after this, that's okay too, because we've got explosions happening, we have highlights and shadows and all kinds of fun stuff that we'll be putting on in, in a few minutes. So I'm just kind of utilizing the tip of my brush to get this whole area in through here, which is going to make my um, edge of my paper look a little bit more wrinkly and, and imperfect, which is always a great thing when you're going for ripped the look of ripped paper and then once I've got this section done I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I don't have I don't even think I really need any down here but just going to make sure that I've got that coat on I'm not going to cover up all of my chalk mark on this one because I don't want to lose the um, outline that I had so I just left a little bit of that chalk mark showing so I've got that in control and then we're going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our cork. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are black, rust, my tan color, and white. And what I'm in essence going to do is I want to put contour, shadows, and highlights, which will tell the shape of the... Um, of the object and then I'm going to put highlights from the explosion of champagne. So I'm going to be using a stippling or a dotting type of technique with the um, corner of my brush and I'm going to be putting 
I'll put a little shadow underneath here. I'll put some shadow down in through here, some shadow on this side. These will be for contouring of it and making it look like it's round. And then I'll put these bright highlights from the light source. So what I'm gonna, uh, gonna first do is put a little bit of rust black and my tan color on there. So I have three colors on my brush right now. I want this to really look nice and textured. So I've got those three colors on my brush and I'm just dotting onto the surface of my cork. Your cork might end up look, looking lighter or darker or have more of the burnt sienna in it or more of the black in it. It's going to be one of those processes that depending on how much of each color you have on your brush will depend on what color you get on the object. So that's the beautiful part about this. You get to kind of explore this type of um, stippling technique and allowing it to give your own kind of color variation. And then I'm just kind of slowly letting myself fade up into the lighter area over here on the left. I'm gonna put a little bit more burnt sienna on my brush right now to give myself a little bit more richness to the left side of this cork in through here. And again, I'm just really dotting it at this point. I'm gonna add a little bit more texture with the lightness and the darkness, but right now I'm just kind of getting this textural type of effect on here so I can um, just make it look even more three-dimensional. Putting a tiny bit of black on my brush right now. I did not wash my brush. I want some good darkness down in through here and maybe on this bottom side so it really looks like it's got some, some shape to it. Maybe a little bit extra up in through here and maybe I'll give a little bit of extra of, of this darkness over on this right hand side. And right now, again, I'm just kind of going for some of this textural effect so we can have it look like it's, you know, got some some form to it. And then once I've got this on here, I'm actually going to right now wash my brush because I wanna I, I wanna wash some of this black off so I can get some nice richness up on the top. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And I'm gonna put some of the tan plus white on my brush right now so I can get some nice brightness up towards this top, which is gonna give you, again, more of that form, maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna too, so I can have almost like a, a not necessarily a pinkish hue, but something a little bit, a little bit more on the, um, that rusty kind of color. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep tapping it in until I feel like I've got the, a good transition from the light to the dark. Gonna do a little bit more in through this top portion in through here, just make it look like it's got a little bit more light or um, shape on the top side of it. And then in a second, I'm gonna add my light from my light source, which will be down at the bottom, but right now just kind of still working on that shape a little bit. This is looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit more lightness in through here, just so we can feel that it's got that roundness to it. And this is what I do. I just kind of keep fiddling with it until I can visually feel like I've got the full shape on there. Maybe a little bit of darkness in through here just to make sure that we feel the, the dip before it kind of bubbles out in through there. And then once I've got this in place, what I'm going to do, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to put a highlight for the light source. So the light source is going to be from here. So I'm going to use a little bit of yellow and white on my brush right now. And I'm gonna give myself this bright highlight down at the bottom edge of my cork, somewhere in through here, and then this little bit of a side edge over in through here. And then what I would do is I would kind of let it dry and see if there's any more fiddling that I wanna do. Like, I think even without drying it, I think I want this to be just a little bit darker right next to that highlight. And then you can certainly keep fiddling with yours all you want. We are going to be utilizing, um, we're gonna utilize this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your cork all nice and done and you've fiddled with all of your tonal values and your lights and your darks, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint this little paper piece on the bottle. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using the same colors that I used for the cork, which are our tan, white, black, and burnt sienna. 
And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to kind of approach it in a similar way to the cork, only I'm going to have a little bit smoother of a um, texture to it, so I'll be doing more rubbing as opposed to dotting. I'll still use some dotting in some points because I love to dot. <laughs> and and from recollection of some pictures I was seeing, there is a little texture in this paper on some of them as well. So we can go for some dots as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach it with my darker shades first and kind of build my way to the lighter shades um, to add that form and dimension to it. So where we have this little indent in through here, I'm going to extend that and make it into the um, edge of the piece of paper. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush. You can even use a tiny bit of water on your brush as well so you can have a little bit of fluidity in your um, bristles. And then I'm gonna take it right from this corner in through here and then I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of a, a rippled kind of edge where I want that that, um, the paper to just kind of fold over in a sense and this is going to be the top side and this will be the underneath side so once I've got it on there then what I can do is I'm going to just kind of rub it into this right side of the piece of paper so it ends up being a little bit darker right in this seam I just put a touch more black paint on my brush so it ends up being nice and dark right in that seam and then I just kind of let it fade out into the rest of the paper. So I'm just kind of rubbing it in right now. I'll probably add some of that um, tan onto my brush in a minute, but right now I just keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel so I can keep control of the amount of paint that I have on my brush and what I'm doing with it. I'm gonna use a little bit of the remnants of the black on my brush to put in some other kind of shadowy type of areas that are gonna make it look like the paper is a little bit rippled in some um, areas. So wherever you want that paper to kind of ripple and dip in a little bit, you can put a little bit of a shadowy type of um, area. And again, I, I have so little paint on my brush, I'm really almost kind of scrubbing it onto the surface of the of the paper and that's making it look like it's got some good texture to it too. This right side would end up being a little bit darker than the left side just because it is on the bottom side of the bottle. So I'm just taking those remnants and just kind of rubbing it in like this just to give myself a little bit more texture in through there and a little bit more shadow. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up with my dirty brush a little bit of my burnt sienna and I'm gonna put a little bit of additional um, colors within these um, edges. So again, just a tiny bit of the burnt sienna is helping me to accomplish a little bit more texture and shininess, I guess, so to speak, on this paper. So it almost looks like it's maybe reflecting some of the things around it. I'm bringing some of it all the way down this edge here. And again, I hardly have any paint on my brush, so it's allowing me to kind of work it in and get it to blend in with the other um, colors that are already on there. And because I'm hardly using any paint on my brush, it's drying really fast, which allows me to paint layers on top of layers, which is another great way to accomplish this, um, this dimensional type of effect. And now that I've got that on there, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to put a tiny bit more black on my brush just so I can make sure I have a little bit of um, some extra dimension on these edges so it looks like it's kind of rounded over a little bit. So I just had a, a tiny, tiny bit of black paint on my brush and this is that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to pick up some of that tan color to make sure that I have a good um, coverage all over my um, all over the paper. So this is a time where I'm just really making sure that I have all the areas are painted in as much as I want them to be. I'll put some highlight on it in a minute, but right now this second coat of my uh, base tan is allowing me to get all of these colors to talk to one another as well as make sure that I've got a good coverage throughout um, throughout the area. So right now just a little bit of that base color and just making sure that I've got it um, painted in here. I think this right side I want a little bit darker. I'm going to add my base coat plus a tiny bit of black paint on my brush. So that's the tan plus a tiny bit of 
um, black paint. I just really want this to be just a little bit darker on this side without um, going too, too dark, but I, I want that left-hand side to really have the look of it being in the light a little bit more. So by darkening this right-hand side a little bit, that's gonna help, help me to accomplish that. Maybe a little bit of yellow on my brush. I just put a tiny bit of yellow to maybe there's having some of the reflection from the explosion that we're gonna see. So just adding these little bits of um, the additional colors is gonna help to make this piece of paper look really nice and shiny. We'll be putting details on it in a minute as well, but this is this yellow is helping me to kind of maybe sell a little bit of the story from the um, shine of the of the explosion that's happening <laughs> above it. So just a little bit of yellow, carrying that over into here as well, maybe a touch over here, and just a teeny tiny bit, not a lot. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of white paint on my brush without washing my brush. I just picked up a little bit of white and I'm gonna add these bits of uh, reflective kind of highlights on some of this paper and uh, on the edges where I feel like I want those edges of the paper to look like they're kind of popping out and wrinkled up a little bit. That's where I'm putting a little bit of white and then you can just kind of um, rub it in to the rest of the paper, but you want to just have a couple of spots that are the brightest. That's what's going to tell the viewer that they're really just kind of rippled and popping out a bit. You know, I'm doing this whole area in here to indicate that maybe this has popped up a little bit, which speaks to this little bump in through here. So you can just tell the viewer whatever you want them to know. If you want them to think that it's popping out a bit, make it a little bit lighter. If you want them to think that it's sinking in and going underneath, make it a little bit darker. And those those little nuances will help to help to sell the story. This side over here, I don't want it to be as light as this side, but I do want there to be some highlights. So I put white plus my tan on my brush, and this is where I can get some of the same story to be told, but without bringing it as far out into the viewing range as that left-hand side. So I can still get the information that there's some pieces that pop out a little bit, but without making them pop out um, into the light as much as the ones on the left-hand side are doing. And then I just kind of keep fiddling with it. I will definitely step away from this, look at it from a distance, make sure that I, I've got all the dimensional elements that I want in it. And again, sometimes just letting it dry for a minute and and getting seeing it from a distance. I think I want this little area to be a little bit darker, so I'm putting a touch more rust and black on my brush and wiping it off on my paper towel just to kind of get this maybe a little bit of a darkness in through this pa paper right in through here. I'm gonna put a little bright highlight on the edge of the paper in a second, um, but this just kind of tells, gets the story of reflections and things like that going on. So to, I'm gonna put a little edge on in through here, and this is gonna be um, like a shiny little piece of the, of the paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my, um, my tan plus white to start on my brush. And I'm just gonna give myself a couple of little quick streaks. So maybe somewhere in through here. You could use your small brush to do this too if you're not comfortable using this size of a brush that I'm using. I'm gonna skip a area, maybe put a little streak in through here. I'm gonna wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some of my burnt sienna and black. I'm gonna do a darker little section in through here. So what I'm doing right now is telling the story of this little piece of paper reflecting some stuff that's around it. So it, it think of it like a piece of glass. It could, it could be reflecting lights and darks and just little streaks here and there. It doesn't have to be um, one solid continual line. So I, right now I'm using my burnt sienna and um, black to give myself these little dark streaks in through here. Maybe I've got a little dark streak in through here. And this is gonna tell the viewer that this piece of the, the wrapper is shiny. So it might have 
a little bit of you know metallic gold or something like that on it so you can explore that i'm going to put a tiny bit of yellow paint on my brush maybe get a little bit of yellow glow in within this white and just have fun with this you know step back see if it's doing everything that you want it to and then once you've got that done we are going to be utilizing um our probably our medium and our large brush for the next step so you can get this done and oh i'm sorry no I'm going to change my mind. We're going to use our small brush for the next step. So you can wash and dry your, or wash your medium brush, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the glass um, bottle. So I'm going to use my small brush. The colors I'm using are green, yellow, black, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a a shiny green color. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this, but the green color that champagne bottles seem to have. <laughs> so it's good. It's a real deep glassy green. And I, I came up with the color using phthalo green and the deep yellow and it, and it really looks the way that I wanted it to. So that's the color that we're going to be using. We're going to be using that for some accent to make it really look like the glass. I'll use it down at the bottom and then we'll use black and white as um, for gray, which will give us some um, additional highlights to the glass. So this is my color that I came up with. And how I got to that was using some of my phthalo green and some of my yellow. And what it does is it makes this really rich, almost like an emerald green type of a color. Um, and it just really works on top of the black in order to give it this um, glass, glassy type of green in, the, in these bottles that you see so often. So once I've got that color, in this in this particular shade you might end up having yours a little bit more on the bluer side or more on the yellow side wh whatever comes out really works I'm going to be I know that my background is black so when I put this on it's gonna be pretty um, bold initially but then as it dries it's gonna get darker and darker because I have that black background I will most likely come through and do a couple of different layers um, to kind of amp it up as it's drying. I might even use a little bit of white to um, put a final kind of blast of a highlight on it. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to kind of identify some sections of my piece of glass. And this is glass, so it's in essence kind of reflecting things around it and you're kind of only seeing through some of it. So you don't need to color the whole thing with green. I know that I have this lip to the um to the glass so i'll put some in through here and i'll kind of skip a spot and do another little spot i also am going to have a little um decorative kind of bump in my glass in through here so i'm going to put a little bit of this green in through here maybe bring it over a little bit then what i'm going to do is i'm going to rub in some lighter or some green areas in through this part of the bottle and maybe have it coming down in through here and i know that my bottle is going to have a round type of shape so i can if i want to i can bring this in kind of a curved line i'm not bringing it all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom i really just want it to look like we're kind of seeing through part of the bottle i'm going to do a little area in through here which is going to kind of maybe look like it's the you know part of the fluid kind of coming out or again that we're just seeing parts through you know we're seeing through the glass a little bit in certain parts then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna let that dry for a minute I'll probably come back through and put a little bit of extra pop of um, brightness in it but I'm gonna come down towards to my bottle down here and again I just want to give the information that we're kind of seeing through the glass a little bit so I'm picking this area kind of off to the left I just designated kind of a, a area in which I started my green and then I'm going to rub my green out so it almost just disappears in the blackness and again it will get darker as it dries so if you're doing this and and maybe you're using a different kind of paint than I am and yours doesn't go as dark as mine does when it dries you can always add some black back into it but right now I'm just kind of getting my green on here letting it kind of disappear at you know out towards that black as it's drying and while this bottom portion is kind of doing its thing and drying I'm going to go back up to the top 
I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start putting my gray highlights on my piece of glass. So I'm going to take a little bit of black and just a touch of white and I'm going to make myself a medium to dark gray color. So I don't need it to be um, that light. I just want it to be a little bit lighter than black to start. I will add more white to it as I go through the process, but I'm starting with this medium to dark gray just so I can maintain control of my sections and where I want these highlights to go. So I want to continue this thought of this bump right in through here. So I'm using my dark gray to kind of um, finish that thought. You could even, I suppose, bring it out a little bit past the, you know, bring a bump out there, but I'm going to kind of just leave it as is like this. I'm putting a little bit of gray there. I'm also going to put uh, maybe a little sparkle of gray up in there. I'll put an area in through here with my gray on it, just kind of keeping in my head that this is in fact a round kind of necked area so I can keep that curvature in um, around the edges. Again, I'm leaving a little black here. I'm leaving a little black there. I'm going to do the same thing in this bottom area here. I'm going to take my gray and just kind of pull it down in these little bits of sections. And of course, your, your little, your highlighted area could be formulated different than mine. It's all right. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm going to pick up a touch of white paint uh, it, with that gray on my brush at the same time and I'm going to put in a little bit more of a highlight within this area. So I'm going more on the left hand side and I'm just kind of pulling up this little bit of a highlight, maybe a little bit in through here and in through here. So what this does, because I'm doing varying shades of my gray, it's going to allow this, this section to have a little bit more um, information as to the shape of the bottle. I'm going to do the same thing with my green in a minute, but I really wanted that first layer of the green to kind of set before I decided um, how involved I'm going to get with the highlight. I'm going to put a little bit more highlight on this um, little edge too, just putting that, a little bit of that gray plus white on my brush and just giving myself a little tiny bit of a highlight right in through here and then um, again I'm going to wait on the green for a minute. I'm going to come down into the bottom part of my bottle. I'm going to use that dark gray to create the the sections of highlights that I want. So I definitely want one over on this side in through here. And if you're going about this and your gray is too um it's it's not flowing enough or it's too light or whatever it you know maybe you can always adjust it with black and or water on your brush so right now i just have my my dark gray i'm going to add a little bit of this sheen in through here maybe a little bit on top of that green that we already had established an area for and then maybe i'll get a little bit of this gray up in through here and again this is really just kind of telling the shape of the bottle giving the reflective type of information I'm going to put a big area down in through here but I think I'm going to pick up my dark gray plus a little bit of black so this area down here is a little bit darker than the top left area and again this will just speak to the um, the shape of the bottle and that this right side is down a little bit more in the in the darkness and again, you can keep adjusting your darkness with your with your black paint. So once I've got that on there, making sure my all my chalk marks are um, taken care of here. Let me just get rid of these little chalk marks. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to amp up this little bit of a highlight on the top on the left hand side of this gray area. So my gray, my dark gray plus a little bit of white is going to give me this extra little highlight on the edge maybe just pull down a little bit there a little bit more white on my brush i can get this little extra shine going on in through here and again in my head i'm just kind of utilizing the contours of the bottle to give me to tell me where this information is i have a bright highlight here so it would make sense if i had kind of a bright highlight right here in the bottle so i used a little bit more white on my brush and something like that now I'm going to amp up that green a little bit. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a little bit more of the green in through here. Maybe concentrate a little bit of an area. And you may not 
need to use white on your brush to um, continually amp up some of these sections of the green but if you're going about it and you really want it to be brighter you can certainly use a little bit of white but my trick is I'm just going to keep layering my green until I get it to be as bright as I want. I might use a touch of white on the little lip but right now I'm just utilizing the green and when I go to do these brighter sections I'm going to be doing doing them in a smaller area than I did the original green um, section. So this way, I'm taking up less real estate with this bright area, but it still allows you to have that dimensional element and it, and it lets you progressively get go to the lighter areas. So just kind of a little bit here, a little bit there, and again, they're just reflections. I'm noticing I need a little bit more black in this area, so I just wiped my brush off. I put a touch of black on my brush to get this area in through here just to make sure I've got everywhere colored in. Then washing my or wiping my brush off, picking up a little bit more of that green, making sure that that's nice and bright. This is working. And I think I am gonna pick up a tiny bit of white with that green so I can just get this one last little um, amped up highlight right here on the little tip of it. So that just kind of sets it in that bright, bright zone for you. Maybe a little bit here. And if you felt you wanted a little couple dots in through there, feel free to do so. And then you just kind of keep fiddling and tweaking with it until you've got it in whatever um, color zone that you want or, or brightness. And then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our explosion of champagne. <laughs> I'm gonna be using my medium brush. You could really use a combination of all three of your brushes for this step, wherever your comfort zone is. I'm gonna be using this and I can talk you through where, like when we do the first step, you could, or the first portion, you could use your bristle brush if you wanted to. When we do our little squiggles, you could use your small brush. But I like my medium brush, so I'm going to be using that for the probably the whole time. So the colors that I'm going to be using are white, yellow, and rust. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this really bright explosion coming out of the edge of my bottle, and then I'll get almost like fireworks to happen all over the place. So I'm going to start right here in the middle with just white paint. So this way, I have a really vibrant base right coming out of the bottle. So I'm just kind of almost just outlining the top of my bottle with my white paint with a nice steady hand. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that white and I'm gonna get it to dissipate or be the most vibrant in through here and then just let myself kind of run out of paint the farther away that I go. So what will happen is in a little while I'm going to put some yellow paint on top of this and the yellow on top of the white is going to be really really bright. And then as I get towards the edge and I start running out of paint I can start kind of pulling it out in this spraying type of a way, but because I'm starting with white paint and because I'm not really um, adding anything to my brush at this point, it is going to allow me with some really vibrant areas or areas for the yellow to be super yellow. But I need this white base in order to allow for that yellow to be as vibrant as it can. So you could utilize both the yellow and the white on your brush at the same time, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that right off the bat. I would recommend you just kind of utilizing the, the white to start and then introducing the yellow after that. So this is how I'm starting it. And you can see I kind of went back to the middle and made it a little bit more concentrated in through there. And then as I run out of paint, I like to just kind of take the um, remnants and give the trajectory of the beams of light. So I'm really just kind of rubbing it onto the canvas. And I don't want to get rid of all that glow underneath that we created earlier. So I'm just kind of being mindful of that as well and just kind of tapping this so it looks nice and natural. Maybe I'll pull a little bit more of this white 
out in through here before I start utilizing that yellow. So right now, just kind of being mindful of where I want all those bright yellowy areas to go. And then this is looking pretty good to me now, so I'm gonna start adding yellow paint. And when I go to do the yellow, I'm not gonna bring it all the way into the center. So I know that I did not use a ton of paint on my um, brush, so my paint dried really pretty quickly on me. I still see that there's a little bit of wetness in the middle, but I am just being conscious about what's wet and what's dry and just working, working this vibrancy into it. As I go towards this center, I'm just gonna kind of tap in this yellow so it looks like it's exploding and it's got this, this textural type of element to it. And whenever I do stuff like this, I love to layer. So I may come back and put more white in the center. I might come back and put, you know, a, a lot of different textural type of elements to it. So I just really kind of start slow and just build my way. And then once I've got, you know, pretty much everything in place, then I can start adding my little, my little, um, you know, details or those final little um, thoughts of information. I do want this to look like there's trajectory out back here too. So again, just utilizing my dirty brush as I go towards these outer skirts of it. I'll put little squiggly lines in a little bit as well, but right now just kind of utilizing the yellow plus whatever remnants of white might have been on my brush and this is looking pretty good right now i'm going to start also adding my burnt sienna and the burnt sienna is going to make it look more fiery so you can use yellow plus the burnt sienna on your brush or just the burnt sienna wherever your comfort zone is you can rub it you can make streaks you can bring some of it overlapping the yellow it's going to be wherever again whatever is making your visual eye really happy and i'm going to after i get all these um colors and stuff on here i'll put some final like white um streaks that will really tell the trajectory of the cork itself but right now just kind of adding my my uh burnt sienna and my yellow and i'll start adding squiggles in a minute but right now just kind of getting these colors on here making sure they overlap and they make sense maybe a little bit more yellow in through here now what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to start adding my um little squiggles and stuff so i'm going to be using i start with just yellow and white on my brush and this is where I'm gonna be utilizing more of the tip of my brush. And I'm, I'm a little bit more um, controlled and not so fast and pushing my brush so hard. You can do little dots of um, sparkly stuff coming out. The yellow and the white is really gonna stand out well on top of all the colors that we did for the background. And when I do, sparkly type of things like this i like to have that darker base underneath so when you do get to these um these sparkly pieces that you want to be on top and you want to have the um show the motion of everything if you do, don't have that dark background to support them, you might not see them as well. And you might find that you wanna use your smaller brush to, to get these on here. I like to use a good amount of paint and just the tip of my brush. I'm not pressing hard, I'm going pretty slow, but you can certainly, like I said, you can do little little dots. That'll tell the story of, you know, more of the um you know the explosion aspect of it but you can you know have fun with that i'm going to do put a little bit more white paint on my brush right now and get the ones that are going to come right out and in the direction of that cork so this is where you're telling the viewer exactly where that cork is coming from and what direction it's going in even though we can you know see that clearly these um motion lines will help to sell that story even more so i'm just going to kind of keep having fun with this and then i'm going to put little squiggles and dots and all kinds of other other fun information and I might build build up the color a little bit more you can certainly build yours as subtle as you want or as dramatic as you want you can have this exploding you know like the like a 
4th of July fireworks display. You can really have tons and tons of fun with it. So just explore your, you know, your explosive side and have fun with it. Maybe you put a couple going in front of the edge of your um, your cork to make it look like the champagne is a really busting out with that with that champagne itself. Maybe even a little bit kind of comes out over the edge of your bottle. So you know, just have fun with this. If you you know, you can utilize the the colors themselves to hide things that maybe didn't come out exactly as you had planned. So just have have fun with it. That's what this is all about. And then once you've got this done. Fiddle with it as much as you want. Put more white, put more yellow, put more rust, whatever whatever works for you. And then we are going to be utilizing our small brush, <clears throat> excuse me, for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going with my small brush. I think I'm gonna go bottom right on this one and I think I'm gonna use yellow and white on my brush to sign my name. I do my initials, but you could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool celebratory image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.